you're going to always find yourself struggling with your identity if you're outside of Christ. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Amanda Speaks. What's good? What's popping? What's good, Mandy Squad? So first of all, if you're new to my channel, you haven't heard about Amanda Speaks, you haven't heard about Mandy Squad, I know where you've been at. I know what's going on. But we're so happy that you made it to this channel, you made it to this video. And if you want to become a part of this amazing family, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button right there. Hit the bell button beside it so you don't miss any further videos. And without further ado, let's hop into today's discussion. And we have another special guest. Now, this woman of God, and I'll be very extra with the woman of God, is very, very, very special. She is phenomenal. And I'm not just saying it, she has impacted my life just personally, and I'm sure there's others that can testify for that. But I'm not going to be the one to introduce her. She's going to introduce herself, tell us a little bit about herself, you know, what she does, you know, anything that inspires her. She's passionate about any projects, anything. So. All right. Hey, Mandy Squad. Did I get it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so awesome to be here. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. It's a great opportunity. It's such an honor to share with you on your YouTube channel. Um, so I'm Kay Drew. And let's see. Let's see, Amanda. <laughs> I am 24. I'm Jamaican, but I live in the U.S. now. Um, I'm a teacher. Um, I do like coaching and um, kind of content creation on the side. Um, what else? I am the founder of the Josh Generation Leaders, which is really a young adult movement. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. I hope, I hope that's good enough. <laughs> that's fine. And I'm sure you, if you guys haven't watched the episode already where I had the vice president of JJL also on this channel, oh. y'all heard from her, y'all heard the stuff. So you know that it's going to be lit. Y'all know it's going to go down. So today's topic is one, honestly, that's very sensitive for me. Um, for the mere fact that I see that a lot of young people, not just females, but both, you know, struggling with this. Mm -hmm. And it's heavy on my heart sometimes because sometimes as an individual, you don't know how to help people by themselves. You don't know what to say, how to act, how, you know, to equip them. You're not quite sure. And sometimes mm -hmm. you need a body of people, a community, or you just need somebody who's further in the faith or just older than your more mature to kind of explain certain things, make it clear. Because mm -hmm. for some persons, it's more confusing for them like they're they're more confused about what's going on what they're supposed to think how they're supposed to act than it is of people actually explaining things to them like people kind of run away i'm gonna understand how i keep but with all that said guys the topic they're going to be talking about is identity and sexuality so you know that all right heavy i just want to take a deep breath you know take a deep breath and let it out <laughs> mm -hmm. so the first question i have for you really is what is identity for you and why is it necessary for us, for you to know who you are and solidify such beliefs? Wow. First of all, this really is indeed like a more touchy topic. Um, there's so many things um, surrounding this topic, so many ideas, thoughts. And I think it's really incredible that you want to tackle it and, you know, help people. Um, and I don't know, I think... Like you said, it's really hard to help with something that you probably are still struggling with or something that you're becoming, you know, like yeah. you're on the journey. But I think with our generation, I'm noticing that God is using us to um, teach others as we learn. You know, we're not getting the opportunity to learn, put it up and then bring it back out. No, it's as we go. So I really commend you for that. Um, as you list identity, you know, I believe your identity is who God created you to be point blank period, mm -hmm. you know, that simple. It's whoever God created you to be. Um, I think it's important therefore to understand who God is since he created you. Um, and since your identity comes from him, um, there is no truly knowing you without, you without truly knowing God. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. you know, we were formed in his image and in his likeness, right? Him, his, <laughs> you know so it only makes sense to go to him to kind of get an understanding of what that is you know but i i would say that your identity is really who god made you to be now as we dive deeper into that there's a lot um 
there's a lot that we've learned over the years where identity is concerned, where we think, well, this can't be my identity because it's, it doesn't seem godlike. And I think, I like <laughs> you know, for example, part of our identity is our sexuality. Part of our identity is um, our passions. And, and those things may not look very church. It may not fit into that yeah. box. And so a lot of us, like myself, struggled with, that part of myself, like I've been, I literally lived a, a huge part of my life rejecting a huge part of my identity because I didn't think it fit into the God box, you know, mm-hmm. forgetting that um, God cares for the whole person and that Jesus experienced what it was like to be a whole person, anger, frustration, creativity, highs, lows, like he experienced all of that. And so why do I think I, I can't experience all of that? So I know that was a, that was a lot. I hope I answered the question. No, that's good. Okay. That's good. Because what popped into my head really, and it's something I was talking to God about, I'm like, it, uh, it has always been a struggle, put it that way, for me, in the sense of, I always knew I was creative, mm-hmm. but it was kind of shut down or kind mm-hmm. of quenched because mm-hmm. it didn't seem like it was, as you said, godly, churchy. Right. And what I wanted to do didn't seem as though it fit into the church structure. Mm-hmm. And it, sh- it was a struggle for me because I'm like, but why do I feel so inclined to do it? Why do I feel so passionate about it if it wasn't from God and how can I you know tie this in with my faith and for anybody who knows me knows somebody love chat when I was younger (laughs) and that was something honestly that was real to me because I did not know that but for the mere fact that you talk a lot you know some persons would tell you okay you are rude you know you talk too much this is not your place you know while some person may say oh you're mature than your age but other persons would tell you that this is not for you. This is not your place. You should not be entertaining certain things or having certain discussions, but you can't fit in with the other people talking about simple things. You can't fit in with Mm -hmm. your age group, the babies, the children. And instead of being guided, it was more shut down. So I'm really happy that you said that because I think a lot of persons, especially Christians, they're not sure or they're struggling rather with certain parts of their identity because the church that you're part of or maybe other Christians have told them that mm-hmm. this is not godly. Simple as, you know, persons wearing colored hair. Simple mm-hmm. as, you know, you saying, I'm not really into the long dresses or I'm not into the long skirts. I kind of want just something like on my knee or whatever. Nothing mm-hmm. inappropriate or whatever, but it's just far from what they're teaching. Mm-hmm. And I personally find that a struggle because I'm like, what happens is that when you don't allow me to show that side, at least guide me or mold me in a godly way, it's as if I want to either forget all about it and then live a life of regret and misery, or I'm going to come out of the organization and do my own thing. Because if I can't express myself the way how I feel like I need to express myself, you're going to tell me that I need to leave. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. Um, that's, a, that's very good. And I don't know, I really feel like this is probably going to end up being more than <laughs> here, right here. Because um, even as you're sharing that about um, the fact that we have all these passions and desires and things um, that have attached themselves to us and really what, what makes us us, you know, our identity. Yeah essentially and sometimes you don't get those spaces especially creatives you don't get those spaces um in lots of church settings to express all of that and uh, i love what you said because that is what we're seeing now we're seeing the group of people who are shutting themselves down they're rejecting parts and pieces of their purpose they are literally um just living a quite robotic life when it comes down to christ and they think they're suffering for christ and this is all that it means um and then you have the other sorts of people who are like, mm, rebellion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's giving me, forget you. <laughs> yeah. You know? So we literally see do those two sets of people, you know, and I think God is really calling up a, a group of people who will kind of like be in the middle. 
you know, those yes. people will allow God to walk with them through their identity and not allow people to set um, standards for their identity that are definitely not biblical or um, just allowing the relationship we have with him to be what fuels what we do and who we become, you know, yeah. um, and that's going to look different for everybody. That's going to look different for everybody. And here's where we start to talk about, you know, what is conviction versus what is opinion versus what is culture versus what is just people's judgment. Like there's, there's just yeah. so many lines here, you know, when it comes on to identity. And I really feel like God wants us to make that known that there's not one way to be a Christian. There is yeah. one way. Christ, there's one way to God. Like there is one, there the foundations and the basics remain the same. But in terms of how we may look, it's going to be different because there's different things, there's different parts of the body that we play, you know. Yes. And so when it comes on to identity, I really, I really agree with you. So yeah, you know, when you're talking about there's not one way to being a Christian, mm-hmm. but there's only one way to God. I remember saying, um, I think to my friend, but also to my my parents, I was like, I think what persons have an issue with. Um, especially Christians or whatever, is we have a problem with the diversity of God. Mm. We, it comes out in everything. We don't always like his methods. We don't always like his discipline. We don't always like how he makes certain people and the way that they are and the way that they express themselves. We don't always like where he chooses to do something and who he chooses to bless in this time. But God is literally calling us to be one not to be divisive, you know, and to accept each other's diversity and mm-hmm. see how it can complement each other, not to tear down each other. Mm-hmm. And I think it ties so much into identity in the sense where going back to the whole quenching and quieting people, I don't think that if you're from a different culture, if you're from a different, you know, background, it should influence um Basically, how you live your life in God. Mm-hmm. Let me clarify. You can be somebody who is a quiet person. You don't really like talking that much. You know, you're sure if you ask to share. If you're in praise and worship, you know, you're the person in the back kind of just meditating, you know, holding on to the word. Versus somebody else who's like, yes, God is, you know, going all up and down. And they're a person, mm-hmm. they're outspoken. They want to be in everything. It doesn't mean that something is wrong with them. It doesn't mean that you're worshiping God more and you're obeying God more than I am. But mm-hmm. the diversity between us is different, but we're all, we all have one goal. We have one agenda and it's to build the kingdom of God. It's to get all those persons, you know, who the devil want to snatch, to snatch them from hell and, you know, allow God to deal with their hearts. So I also want to speak to like non-believers because I know it's not only Christians that watch, um, this channel but like what would you say to non-believers who struggle with their identity some may be on the fence yes they know about god they don't really have a relationship another person may just be plain struggling be like i don't even know if i want to believe in all that rah rah what would you say to them you know the first thing that came to mind as you asked that question is you're going to always find yourself struggling with your identity if you're outside of christ always because like i said in the beginning your identity comes from god your identity Mm -hmm. literally comes from god you were created in his image and in his likeness and so certain things about who you are why you're here and what you're called to do those questions won't necessarily be answered in truth (laughs) because you may answer them with other things but they won't be answered in truth and 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 with um everything that it needs to entail if you're outside of god you know like we came from god like literally like think about it i use this example all the time even in jgl that if you literally buy a laptop and the laptop is that their laptop right and something is going wrong with it. it you don't understand how to use it you can't call walmart that she bought it from and say hey make it make sense you have to yeah. call Dell because the laptop came from Dell. They manufactured it. They know the ins and the outs. They know when you need updates. They know when um, something's about to go wrong. And so yeah. 
questions about who you are and what you're here for and what you're called to do will always stand if you are not constantly going back to your creator, who you came from, you know? And so I guess my biggest advice is to get to know God because in getting to know God, you get to know you. Like even now in JJ, we're kind of diving into Genesis and it's making sense about who we are with finding out who God is. It's yeah. making even more sense why we're here and what we're supposed to do, you know? So that's like my biggest encouragement. I love that. I remember you sharing um, your struggles about rejection, you know, just rejecting things mm-hmm. um, as it pertains to your identity and stuff. Can you share a little more, a little more detail on that? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this season, if I'm being very transparent, this season that I'm in has a lot to do with like this re- reformation in my identity, you know? So I think it's so mm-hmm. incredible that we're here right now. Um, I made a post one time on Instagram saying that to those who are loud, I'm too quiet. To those who are quiet, mm-hmm. I'm too loud. To those who are churchy, I'm too a. Hey. And to those who are a. Hey. I'm too churchy. And this has literally been my life for years. And I found myself literally trying to fit, bend, you know, crawl under to make sure I, um, to make sure I am meeting the needs of the people in the room to make sure I'm becoming or not becoming who they don't want me to be, you know? So when I'm with the more churchified set, I could be more churchified when I'm with, you know, like we hanging out. Hey, I tried to be that. I used to like have this internal battle, you know, I'm like, oh my, oh my gosh, am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? And I started to understand that you'll never be enough of something for anyone, but it's so important to be all that God is creating you to be and has made you to be because there's a specific thing that you're called to do in the earth. And if you continue to like allow people and what they have to say about you and what they think you're supposed to be to kind of be what directs you, you're going to find yourself in problems. You're going to find yourself not even knowing yourself. I remember in college, I literally lost myself. I didn't know who I was. Because I was trying to be what my parents wanted me to be. I was also trying to be what my college friends wanted me to be, you know, and (laughs) If you do that a lot, sooner or later, you're not going to remember or even know which one of those you really are. There you go. As life life continued, I got to realize that, man, I am all those things. Oh, I can be all those things at the same time. Oh, diverse, multifaceted. It's giving uh, one God and everything that comes with that and everything that people don't think that comes with that you know what I mean like for some people when you hear a woman of God you're not thinking about you know dressing up going to brunch and like being cute Mm. you know you're not thinking about like content creative doing a reel with the music and dancing you're thinking about fire and and this struggle and like Like, no like and I think God is raising up people to make it look us because Honestly, I'm not saying we need to go down low to meet people, but I'm saying we need to be real. We need to yes. be real. And we need Woo. to be self. Like when I used to be more on the legalistic side of life, the mm. people I talked to the most were those people who are in church, the people who really and truly they have, if, 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 if heaven was this country we're visiting and we need a passport and visa, they basically have the passports and the visa. You know, I'm <laughs> kind of expiring, but um, they had their passport and their visa. And here I am talking and being a part and helping and which nothing is wrong with that. But what about the people who don't even know the first step to acquiring that yeah. visa to heaven? And as soon as I started to step out and be myself, I started to get questions in my DMs, like ministering to people who I don't even know and have never met. Yeah. You know, and what did I do? Water down and be a skittel, you know, Jamaican say. <laughs> no, what I did was find myself in God. And in finding yes. myself in God, he, he, it's almost as if find, I'm going to say this. I think finding yourself in God yields maximum glory for your purpose to be made manifest in the earth. 
That's what I believe. Like when you really find yourself in God and, and, and you start to walk out all that he's called me to be and do, like the glory he receives from that, it's just so beautiful. Because even the Bible tells us we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Where are you going being fake? Where are you going not even knowing who you are? I talk to people about who they need to be. Yeah. Like, sit down somewhere, you know? So, Ooh. yeah. That, that's good. That is, that's, that's good. And, you know, just to even add to that in the sense of when we don't know ourselves, we yeah. ultimately hurt other persons. Yeah. Because if we don't know our purpose, Mm-hmm. If we not, if we're not walking in purpose, we're already leading people astray. We're already mishandling people. Mm-hmm. We're already mistreating them. We're already misguiding them because we don't even know what we are about. <laughs> Much just to tell them what they are about. Like where right. are we going? It's blind leading blind. <laughs> Hello. Right. right. But so- I, I honestly think it's a great segue um, because I think I can put two questions in one. Mm-hmm. How does sexuality impact identity? And we mentioned, we mentioned, you know, um, finding ourselves in Christ. Like you can ultimately only find yourself in Christ. So mm-hmm. what would you have to say to these persons who, you know, they're all about finding their, their identity in work, in money, in zodiac signs, in the culture, mm-hmm. and just in the organization, like of church, not necessarily the church, the capital C type of church, but the organization itself, if you take them outside, they don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. What would you say to them? So I'm going to answer the last question first. Um, with those of us who are finding ourselves um, looking for identity in everything else but God, what we're choosing to do is settle for carbon copies. What we're choosing to do is settle for counterfeits. We're not doing the real thing. Um, and if you've ever bought the fake version of a thing, um, for example, like a bag or shoes or whatever, it doesn't last as long. Yeah. <laughs> it's not durable, right? Um, you waste your money, you waste your time, you waste your effort, and you live a lie. You know that's not real. <laughs> And you live a lie, you know? And so I think every time we start to spend more time and more effort and we start to seek out these other things, we have literally rejected the path of spirit and in truth. And now we may do spirit, but we're not doing truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, And so even with the whole horoscopes and zodiac, like, don't get me started. Like I literally did a <laughs> video on my Instagram about it because I really wanted to understand it because I didn't understand it. You know, and that's mm-hmm. another thing. Like as a Christian, you don't want to just tackle all these topics and tell people, come out of that. Have no understanding. Well, try to understand it. Do some research. Um, trust me, you're not going to um, fall into any like deep thing in trying to get in, acquire information to help people, you know, so I did some research on the whole horoscopes and Zodiac thing, you know, and I started to get some revelations. Like the Holy Spirit started to show me that people are allowing the created things to take the place of the uncreated one. And that is the prime tactic plan and agenda of the enemy. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. He wants you to give up the real thing for something else and if you think about it the sun the stars the moon all these things that we are you know basing our identity on oh you know the position of all these celestial bodies those things weren't even created on the first day <laughs> you know they weren't even created on the first day and they themselves they themselves have to answer to a higher power so yeah. where are we and higher power being god Okay, let me just make it very clear. <laughs> let me make it very clear. You know, I, I do want to use the terms that they use, but I want us to know that higher power. Mm, 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 he's not higher. Not the power. universe, guys. And listen to you know. Let me even correct that. He's not the higher power. He is the power. 
You know what I'm saying? Because to say higher power is to put God in some type of comparison. Last time I checked, no one can mm. beat him. No one can dethrone him. There was none before, beside, and will ever come after him. He's God and God all by himself, you know? And it's, it's really a plan of the enemy for us to go ahead and make gods and, and decisions. And, and um, some people really make some life decisions, you know, based on these things, these created things. And it's crazy, too, because we were the apex, the, the, the grand reveal of his creation, the highest point, yeah. the best part. And we are coming under that, like we're coming under the things that were like, yeah, all right, that's good. Stay here, you know, put you in the sky, put you over here. We're literally coming under that. No, that's that's the devil. And the devil really doesn't want us to really experience God for himself as the real thing no he yeah. wants his copies so you know all that you just shared about us <laughs> i didn't say everything and even starting with like the celestial beings and the universe and that's so good that's mm-hmm. so good because as you mentioned there are persons that base their life upon these celestial beings these zodiac signs horoscope people will not leave their houses until they get to their horoscope for the morning and they'll determine who they're supposed to interact with versus who they're not supposed to interact with. But also while you're tying that into even just sexuality in general, you know, how does sexuality play a part in person's identity? Because for some persons, when you speak about their sexuality, it feels like you're attacking their whole identity because that's what it's been shaped in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think sexuality and identity they can very much go hand in hand. However, I don't think, um, how do I say it? I don't think like, kind of like what you said, I don't think we should just say, all right, sexuality, that's it. Like, that's all that I am. You know what I mean? I -hmm. think we're, like I said earlier, we're multifaceted and there's a whole lot that goes on. However, identity and sexuality, very much here, you know, very much here. That's what I would share. Yeah. So, okay, so it works in tandem. So when persons put their sexuality over their identity, what, what's the common thing that you see happen? Like what dysfunction or what problem, concern do you see actually happen if you've ever had that experience? So as you list your, your, I think it was your first question because I answered the last yeah. question first about sexuality and identity. You know, they definitely do play a part. You know, they kind of go hand in hand, you know. Um, however, I think uh, we need to dive into it a little bit because even as it relates to, let's talk about female sexuality, right? Mm-hmm. By the way, I love being a woman. Thank you, y'all. <laughs> best experience i mean i couldn't even say that because i don't know what i don't know what it's like to be a man but (laughs) let's let's talk about like female sexuality i think here is where we need to talk about who okay we need to talk about being multifaceted now we have to tread light because even with female sexuality i think voices such as um, legalism, the church and culture and society all plays a part in what they think that should look like, you know? And this is where it goes back to what we're talking about in the beginning, walking out your identity and living out your identity and all that it is based on your relationship with God, you know? Yeah. I'm going to share this to kind of convey what I'm trying to say. So, as I started to walk away from the whole legalism and starting to walk on my identity in Christ, um, I had called my friend one day because I really wanted to buy this outfit. No, this outfit, it don't really fit into the whole, you know, female okay. sexuality and basically okay. how, you know, you know, you know, we're getting deep on this, chilies in this little, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um i wanted to like it was like shorts and like a nike shirt some nike shoes you know a cross yeah. bag bucket hat and everything inside of me this was maybe a year or two ago yeah maybe two years ago everything inside of me is like no 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 
because you're not demonstrating, you know, the woman, female, like, uh, 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 uh. no, you, you remember that verse in Deuteronomy and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, I'm not saying, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that you as a woman should dress up as a man and we can't tell that you're a woman. And I'm not saying that. However, I think this one way to be, just like what we just said, yeah. one way to be, we need to tackle that. We need to tackle that because I think it's okay to wear like shorts and shirts and a bucket hat. And, you know, I think it's okay to, 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 to do that, you know, just as long as you're not doing it out of rebellion or out of just wanting to do your own thing. And it has to all be done out of relationship with Christ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I know for a lot of people, this may seem like a lot, but it, it, it's it's super important to talk about. And I love that you're you're sharing this because I think a lot of people are struggling with that, you know, like yeah. identity and what their identity should look like and what their sexuality in light of their identity should look like. And just all of it is just so like crossed up and mixed up. But I use that example to kind of show how I was having that internal battle, you know, like this is not the church's definition of my sexuality in light of my identity in Christ like no you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> and 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 sooner and as i as i really sat with it with god it's like god was basically talking to me it's like you know what let's hold off on this for a little bit i want to walk mm-hmm. with you more in your relationship because here we go to our next part what i did not know that he made me con- like understand over time was that in that moment, me wanting to dress and look and act a certain way was out of a situation that was happening that was a direct like reflection of some trauma. You know what I mean? Mm. So you see how like everything, identity, sexuality, all of it has to like yeah. be based on your relationship with God. <laughs> you know? It yeah. has to you can't just be, oh, I feel this. And no, it doesn't matter. Each our feelings are fickle. Okay, you know, and and so guys, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're gonna stay away from that right now because I still, I see what this can cause for you, and I, I guess it's gonna go mm. into that you did tell me that may come up in this conversation when I struggle mm. with um, like same sex attraction. No, I've never really shared this on a platform like this. So Amanda Squad, you know, <laughs> I love y'all. And it's not even me, but it's really just God and God wanting this to be out there. I didn't mm. know that me wanting to do stuff like that, like dress a certain way, be a certain way. I wasn't fully healed and I didn't fully overcome that at that time, you know. And um, I really had to sit with God to really walk through my identity in him and walk mm. through sexuality in him and allow him to refine me and heal me and cleanse me you know what I mean and it allow me to really see who I am and who he's making me to be and from yeah. there now from there I can walk confidently from there I can really um just be what all that it means to be a woman of God as stipulated by him so yeah, yeah. oh that makes sense that was a lot first first of all I just want to say thank you for sharing that because sharing parts of our stories is not always the easiest there's one part that's always easy to share because you know we do it a lot mm-hmm. but then there's another part where we're kind of uncertain so thank you for that um and i really like the fact that you brought up that god was dealing with you um about something when you wanted to dress in those clothes and stuff. i think what we just as people need to understand is that clothing is never the issue mm-hmm. like what you wear per se is and to an extent because i yeah. know people will take this out of context <laughs> right. it's, not, it's not necessarily the clothes you wear but like what you allow the clothing to ascribe to you and mm-hmm. to who you are you know mm-hmm. and the whole reason why it's important to walk with god in your identity and in your sexuality is because just as Kay said he starts to reveal some things that you'd never know about unless you came to him. Mm-hmm. And I know that in just my relationship and walk with God, there have been certain things that God has really been teaching me and saying to me that this is why you're like this. This is why you're defensive about this. And this is why I can't allow you to wear this or do this yet because, again, he's omnipresent. So you know the past, present, future, 
mm-hmm. and you know that if you do this right now it gonna hurt you later on right, so right. i really love that you brought that up like really really love because and the persons who are saying you know i just feel this or i want to do with this because xyz sometimes if we're not careful we allow our feelings to override our logic mm-hmm. we allow our feelings to override our conscience i put mm-hmm. it that way and what happens is that if we allow our fickle feelings to always rule us we end up becoming fickle mm-hmm. we end up becoming indecisive and double minded and on the fence about everything and right. it's easy to be manipulated you know i don't know if you have anything to share right there yeah and um just to add when we allow our feelings um to kind of be the driver you know of our of our journey yeah we are trying to high key step in the place of god and that is out of order that is out of order and we're literally you know how the bible even says that men are going to become lovers of themselves you allowing yourself to kind of take over and dictate all of yourself is that verse right there you know what i mean mm-hmm. you becoming your own god and literally the very first commandment is you should have no other gods not even yourself okay mm-hmm. besides yahweh you know so that's all i wanted to share right there love that love that mm-hmm. so you know as we're kind of kind of closing um what what advice could you give to somebody whether believer or not um obviously salvation is always in the picture like cuz we're both christian guys <laughs> but um what advice would you give to somebody who is struggling with identity and sexuality Ooh, um like you said salvation is always the go to but i think i'll put it this way i think the very first thing you need to do is give yourself grace give yourself grace and space because that's another thing <laughs> if people are hurting and wounded and having these like issues you know some you know sometimes as christians we tend to just think it's cuz you need jesus and you just blah, 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 and just throw it at them you know what i mean uh-huh. um but i think it's so important for you to pause stop and give yourself grace and space and start to even journal things write things down and invite Jesus in it doesn't have to be a whole you know episode and get crazy and loud um but invite Jesus in like give him a try like even from this conversation our god i hear that you know who i am Obviously, I don't know who I am. And all these things that I have been looking to to tell me who I am, I'm realizing they're not the real thing, and if I'm being honest, they're off. <laughs> you know? So let me give you a try. And let let me let me let me really lean into you. And I'll tell you even this, when I I don't just say restarted, but when I really started to um commit my life to Christ, and i said god listen i'm at the end and all i know about you is what people have to say about you i don't know it for myself i literally told him that one night i think maybe 2016 august that time and literally this is what i heard him say as you give me this try as you choose to invite me in to make sense of what is nonsense two things i ask of you one trust me without a plan b and two trust me without an expiration date that has literally been 2016 what i have been living on and that i think has really helped me to dive into who god is and ultimately start to understand who i am and what he has me here to do it's so important that as you invite him into that space that you don't have a plan b because unlike the other things that you're trying yeah god doesn't compete you know <laughs> he doesn't really do that it's not like okay i'll try um horoscope today and then i'll try this tomorrow he's kind of that that thing where you know you have to try him and there can't be any backups that's how he yeah. works 
you know that's how he works and also you can't put an expiration date on it you know you can't just say you have three days to work this is not amazon you what you trying to express you <laughs> you know what i'm saying and if we're being real all the other things that we dive into they take more than three days you know like <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's a lot of work here from our parts yeah you know he told me that and so that's why i'm saying man just lean into him and tr- and i'll give you that same advice trust him without a plan b that's that's the whole essence mm-hmm. of faith what he requires you can't serve him you can't really experience him fully without faith you know and faith there's no plan b there's no expiration date it's like falling into a pool you can't swim mm-hmm. But somewhere, somehow, you know, you're not going to drown. That's what faith is like to me, you know? And trust me, he will do it. He will do it. He will do it. He will send people. He will send scriptures. He will give you dreams because God does not lie. And the thing about him is when you call him, when you inquire of him, oh, he's going to show up. (laughs) <laughs> he gonna show yes. out. He's gonna show up and show out. And he, if that's the desire of your heart, he's going to meet it. That's also in his word. He's going to meet that desire of your heart. You know. So start there. Start small. Write out questions and invite him in. And again, doesn't have to be something, you know, extraordinary. It's just literally sitting down in your bed. I'm looking at my bed right now, like sitting down in your bed and just saying, "I heard, I heard your work." And I heard that this is how you work. Please come in. This is how I feel. This is what I'm experiencing. Yeah. But this is what... pastors preached about it. There's this man who said, "Hey, hey, God, I, 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 I hear what you do. I hear you can heal. I have my son here. I believe you, but I kind of have unbelief. You think you can do it?" And God is like, "Jesus, as God, God is like." Can I do it? <laughs> oh, I hear about me. <laughs> you know, and the man literally responded, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yes. So if God, the Im- like the image of God, like Jesus Christ is standing right here before this man and he says, I believe you, but I kind of don't believe you. Have some doubts. Help my unbelief. Why do you think he won't hear you and he won't understand when you have doubts and yeah. when you have unbelief? That's good. So yeah, that's that's good. That's what I would and say. And I, I continue to say, like I've said this multiple times, but guys, be honest, like be honest with God completely. Like he literally your best friend. <laughs> He's yeah. literally, really and truly there. He is not afraid of your hurt, your pain your frustration, your anger, he can handle all of that. Yeah. So yeah. honesty is the best, literally the yeah. best policy. <laughs> yes. You know, um, I also just want to say, um, find people who are more mature than you, mm-hmm. um, whether in the faith, for people, listen, again, salvation is always the key. It is always the key. But I will say generally, Find persons who are more mature in the area that you're seeking help for mm-hmm. and actually be vulnerable with them, like be honest with them and see, listen, if I can phrase like listen to what they're saying. Because first of all, it's not everybody that gives you advice. It's good advice. Everybody mm-hmm. that gives you advice is not wisdom. <laughs> so you also have to understand who you're going to why you're going to them mm-hmm. it's not just because oh somebody told me to understand your why understand why you're going to them what is it that you really need help with and start out with that one thing you might just realize that there's a bag of things but start off with one thing that's really really bothering you because mm-hmm. find community yeah. we often are of the belief that we can do things on our own all the time there are some things we have to do on our own, but we don't always have to be alone all the time to go through our storms all the time and to be in our heads all the time. Right. Find persons who can help you up. Find persons who can give you strength. Find people who can pray over you. Like, 
listen, uh, I don't mm-hmm. know about nobody else, but prayer has been one of the things that has kept me, kept my life and kept me going. Yeah. So find persons that are not afraid to pray over you, pray for you, pray on behalf of you. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're going to need some persons to intercede and war for you. Because some of these things are not just natural things that are happening. Some things are spiritual things. Some things Absolutely. have been passed down, like down from mm-hmm. way back when that you're not even aware of until somebody says it to you. Right. So mm-hmm. find help. Find- <laughs> it sounds so weird to say find help. <laughs> but <laughs> find people that you can trust. Yeah. And guys... I will definitely leave, you know, as usual. I'll leave the AGL's link down below to find the community as well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, you can follow Kay on her Instagram, follow me on my Instagram. And I'm also going to leave somebody else's channel that I have been watching for a while. She's not on YouTube for, not on, she's not on YouTube right, right now. But she has done topics like these and mm-hmm. I've found them very insightful. Um, I'll definitely leave that below so that you guys can check it out. She has some amazing. You're probably guessing who I'm talking about by now. Um, yeah, so go check her out because she's really amazing. But guys, this is all we have for today's episode. I really hope that you're blessed. I really hope that you know you got a lot from the woman of God and what oh, she was saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and guys, you know DM is always open to anybody who wants to shoot me. A message or even shoot K. A message, you know, it's open. But until next time, guys, I'll see you.